The following video is a Dennis the Menace production. Dennis the Menace, this name will never stick. On this episode of, is that going to be on the exam, we look at types of development. Alright, so when discussing development, we're going to be looking at two main fundamental types of software. So, of course, the question is, what are the two main uh, fundamental types of software? There are off-the-shelf software and there's bespoke software. So we're going to look into both of those a little bit. Um, and we're going to learn the differences and which one would be more readily used by which uh, type of people and for what reasons. So even though they're both types of software, there's different reasons to use each. And we're going to get into more detail with those on the next slide. Um, the image here is an example of this uh, bespoke software at Voco Solutions. So it's just something. Uh... All right, so the first type of software we're going to look at is off-the-shelf software. So off-the-shelf software is widely available for general purpose um, from software vendors. So um, the example in the image here is Windows. You can just go to any software vendor and you can buy Windows Vista or Basic or Premium or whatever you need. Um, and what types of organizations use off-the-shelf software? It's really any organization can use off-the-shelf software. Um, much of it is just very simple, basic uh, types of software that would run what most people need to handle small projects and stuff. Um, however, there can be a little bit of specialization in off-the-shelf software. It's not very specialized, but you can get software that's specific for one type of job or one type of a uh, position. So um, like school financing, there could be software for school specific school financing. So there's a little bit of specialization, but it is still off-the-shelf software, which we're going to see a difference in when we go to bespoke software. So keep in mind that many off-the-shelf softwares aren't very specialized. All right, next is custom and uh, or bespoke software. They're both the same thing. It's just a different way to say the same word. So custom and bespoke software are created specifically for a single organization. So this means that it's specialized specifically for one specific organization or company or group of people to be used by them and only them. So this is really important because it allows them to have uh, individuality and it makes it easier for them to interact with instead of having to go around with um, many fundamental things that everyone uses they have specific to their needs so um, one thing important in this is the concept of software development companies and what they are is companies that uh, would develop this custom software for an organization however certain companies usually larger companies have personal software developers on site that they use and those software developers on site would create the software that's used by the organization. So it's kind of cool to think that um, they would have personal software uh, designers that um, they just tell them what you need. Like I need a, a spreadsheet format software where I can insert data about financing and then come back with how much um, income I'll need to counteract my uh, expenses. And it's kind of cool to see how that relates. And in the image, you can see that it starts with design, develop, deliver, and discuss, which is how the um, software developers on site would work. After design, they would develop and deliver it. And then after they delivered, they would discuss with other software developers and the organization. And then based on the feedback, they would start the process over again, trying to fix mistakes. All right, so something important is development tools. And one of the main development tools when discussing software is source code and integrated development environments. So we're going to keep looking those on the next one. But um, this image kind of here shows what's going to happen. Um, the source code is going to go in, as you can see from the top one. And then it's going to go through a compiler. And in the compiler, the source code is changed into executable module, as the image says, otherwise known as machine language. And we'll go back and we'll discuss it more in detail in the next slide. Okay, so source code. Uh, through the use of a text editor, a program source code is created. And then um, after it's created, it goes through a compiler, which translates from source code uh, to machine code. And while, and while this is all going on, debugging tools find and fix errors in the code to make it uh, back to what the people need. 
So um, it's really cool to see how that happens automatically, just putting it into the compiler and then having the debugging tools automatically fix things is really amazing. Um, all of these, the source code compiler to machine code and debugging tools are packaged together into what is called an integrated development environment, otherwise known as an IDE. So um, IEDs or IDEs, I apologize, are very important when discussing development tools. And these are the sources I use to gather information for this uh, PowerPoint. Uh, thank you very much for watching another Dennis the Menace production video. Dennis the Menace Productions, I can't believe that name stuck.